Now, finances and investing can be a daunting task, but taking little wins and finding encouraging perspectives has always helped me stay the course when I can't find the motivation to keep going. So I wanted to make a video for you that hopefully does the same, so you can see that you're actually much further along than you think. I also brought my assistant along today to help me with this video, so it's gonna be extra special. In this day and age, it's easier to compare ourselves to other people via news or TV or Instagram. Well, not me, because my Instagram got hacked. Not cool. But anyway, I'm Professor G, so go ahead and turn your textbooks to page 43, and let's get started on the eight signs that you're actually doing well financially. The first one on this list, all of you should be able to cross out, seeing as you're actually watching this video. But the first one is that you actually care to have financial success or to find financial freedom. This may seem obvious, but I venture to guess that in your friend group, at least half of your friends probably don't even think about this. The way to know if you're doing this step is that you've at least begun to think about years down the road and not just blowing whatever money is extra in your checking account. You have a budget or you're at least sticking to strictly spending less than you make. You've started to figure out about how much money you think you're gonna need to retire. So then how will you get to that goal? The earlier that you get started, the less you have to put away each month to actually hit that goal. For example, to hit $1 million in your investing retirement account by the time you hit 65, if you're age 50, and invest in something like the S&P 500 with an annual average appreciation of 10%, you'd need to invest $2,600 per month. But if you started at age 40 instead and invested until 65 or 25 years, you'd only need to put away about $850 per month. The big difference there is that in the second scenario, you invested $255,850 of your own money, and compound interest added $756,499. In that first scenario, you invested $470,600, and compound interest gave you about $531,000. That's quite a difference. If you started earlier, it took you $200,000 less of your own money to get you to that exact same goal. Number two, you have a stable income. You're well into your career or your business has passed that startup stage and is very, very stable and is able to at least forecast what's actually gonna happen over the next year or two years. A lot of people do not have this. So if you feel even just a little bit stable within your company and your income doesn't fluctuate much, this is such a blessing. The third sign that you're doing well financially is that you have multiple income streams. And yes, there are outliers to this where your full-time career is literally all you'll ever need and there's no worry of that ever being taken away. Something like a doctor or lawyer, you'll always find work and you probably can't do a side hustle anyway because your job is too demanding as far as time. For most other people, having a side income is going to be just smart. Even if one's not very substantial, it's a couple hundred dollars per month, you should have multiple ways of making money. I know for me, it's always provided peace of mind. Technically, I could just be a full-time professor and be totally okay with it as far as how much money I make. I don't know if it's because I lack trust in just institutions in general, or I wanna make sure and have more of the control in my own hands. But for me, I've always wanted to have multiple income streams in case one of them gets taken away unexplained. I have too many friends or family members that have lost jobs in companies where they worked there for 20 years and were amazing employees. It wasn't their fault that they had to get fired. It's just business. And at some point, sometimes companies need to cut in order to stay healthy. And so I just never wanted to put myself in that position. Number four is that you are not one of the 56% who can't cover a $1,000 emergency expense. This means you have an emergency savings account and that it's funded to at least $1,000. The bonus here would be that you don't just have $1,000 saved up, you actually have multiple months of living expenses saved up. The bonus bonus here is that you actually house this savings in a high yield savings account, which actually earns you extra money just by sitting there. In this video, I go over my top five high yield savings accounts for 2023 that I recently put out in August. So check that out as soon as possible because the rates are through the roof and it's literally free money out there for anyone to grab totally guaranteed and safe. High yield savings accounts rates are variable and they do go up and they can come back down, but they're going to be up for a very long time, especially with the Fed saying that they're gonna to continue to raise that interest rate. 
Number five on this list should come as no surprise, but you're doing well financially if you have a good credit score. The FICO model of credit scoring puts credit scores into six categories. Very poor would be 300 to 579. Poor would be 580 to 669. Fair would be 601 to 660. Good is 670 to 739. Very good is 740 to 799. And exceptional is 800 to 850. We should all be shooting for very good or exceptional but a good way to figure out where you're at compared to other people might be to look at what is the average score for your age category. If you're Generation Z or 18 to 25, the average score is a 679. If you're a millennial, 26 to 41, the average score is 687. Generation X or 42 to 57, the average score is 706. For baby boomers, 58 to 76, average score is 742 and the silent generation 77 plus is a 760. A good credit score means that you pay your bills on time. It also means that you understand how to spend your money and more importantly, how to not spend your money, which takes us to number six. And number six is that you actually think about what you're spending your money on. Some may map it out well in advance. Some may have a budget. Some may just do a good job of thinking on the spot. The difference here is that you're not just blindly spending. Something that helped me start to understand the value of money, when I started to see it not as a number or not as a, an amount of cash, but more so the value as far as my time. So if you make $20 an hour and you wanna buy some shoes, and those shoes cost you $200, it actually costs you 10 hours worth of your life, 10 hours of time working to be able to go and buy those shoes. Looking at it from that perspective, you could say, are these shoes worth 10 hours of my life? And sometimes that drip is just too fresh, so you have to take it down. Sorry, sometimes I gotta show my students that I'm still cool too. But anyway, if you have a justification as to why you're spending on whatever it is that you're spending, you're probably in a good headspace financially, and you're probably doing pretty well there. The seventh sign that you're probably doing pretty well financially, or at least better than you think financially, is that you actually have an investing strategy. Notice that I didn't just say that you invest. An investing strategy is so much different because it's big picture. You've answered the following questions, and now you're getting as much invested as possible. What are you investing for? Retirement, early retirement, passive income for financial freedom, send your kids to college, hand money down to generations. What is the ultimate why behind your investing? Do you want to invest for appreciation or for cash flow or both? Appreciation would be like a growth ETF where the goal is to grow the share price. Cash flow would be like a dividend ETF where the goal is to make passive income or cash flow every quarter from the dividend dispersion. How will you get enough capital in the market? And the big one, what will you do if the market drops? All of these play into what your investing strategy is. And the correct answer to these questions is gonna be very individual and very specialized to you. So keep doing much research, watching channels like mine and people that you trust, and then go deeper to build out your personal strategy. Number eight, and this is a big one, which is why I put it last, but a huge sign to figure out if you're doing well financially is that within your investing strategy, you actually have a lot of money or a substantial amount of money invested. Substantial is obviously relative, but the first couple steps, at least for myself, would be that you're surpassing the average amount invested for your age category as reported by Fidelity. The average amount invested for age 20 to 29 is 10,500. From 30 to 39 is 38,400. From 40 to 49 is 93,400. From 50 to 59 is 160,000. And from 60 to 69 is 182,100. This would be including retirement. And so those numbers are actually quite low. So you should make it your first goal to try to surpass those numbers for your age category. The next step within this sign, at least for me, that I built out for myself, is that you have at least five figures worth invested within two or three different asset classes outside of your retirement account. For me, that was to build up a brokerage account, that was to build up some real estate, building out businesses, other asset classes like crypto or commodities, or even building out that high yield savings account to a solid number. Having that kind of money in two or three different places really gives you some peace of mind. And then the final step within this sign, or at least for myself, a big goal for myself that I've had is to have six figures worth of investing within 
two or three different asset classes. My goal for quite some time was to have that amount of money in five different places outside of my retirement account, and I'm getting pretty close. My outside assets are real estate, business, equities, or the brokerage account, crypto. When I say crypto, I really just mean Bitcoin at this point and then a high yield savings account. And I know there's a number of you that just absolutely hate crypto or don't like Bitcoin. Fine, don't invest in that. I don't particularly like gold or bonds, so I don't invest in that. But as far as what to invest in, whether it's for retirement or your brokerage account, I found the simplest, just the absolute easiest three fund portfolio that anyone could invest in that you could just set and forget. And the returns are absolutely crushing anything on the market right now. Check out this video on not only what the three fund portfolio is, but how exactly to allocate your holdings and what percentage works best for your age group.